Hello, my name is Lewis Miller. I work for Lugong Machinery North America out of Katy, Texas. Today we are here to go over maintenance of the 922E Tier 4 Final Machine. Okay, we're going to go into the cabin and get the operator's manual. Open the door. And then when climbing into the cab, you want three points of contact at all times. Once you're inside the cab, you want to make sure that you put your seat belt on. Bring it around, click it into position. Next, you can reach behind your seat and take your maintenance manual out of the back pocket and then open it to the maintenance section of the book that tells you all of your maintenance schedules from daily all the way up to 4,500 hours. On the daily maintenance, what you want to do is you want to check the machine to make sure that your bucket teeth are not worn or broken or loose. Same way with all of your bolts and fasteners across all of your attachments. You want to just visually check the entire machine as you walk around to see if you have any loose bolts or damage. Come on back to your track frame. You want to make sure that your track frame is in good condition and tight, no damage. You can check the outside of your machine for no damage. Check your tracks here. Make sure there's no damage in there and everything looks nice and tight. Okay, when you come around the back of the machine, you want to make sure that there's no damage up underneath, no leaks underneath. Come on around. You want to make sure that all of your safety decals are, are visible and no damage. Come on around to your machine. Continue. You will actually check and make sure all of your track pads are tight and secure and everything looks clean. Look at all your handrails to make sure they're tight. Check your mirrors to make sure they're not broken. Come on around. Then you can check this side of the boom to make sure that there's no leaks and all your hoses are tight and clean. Come on down. Check your lights to make sure that they're not broken. Come on to the front end. There again, check all your fasteners on your hoses. Make sure they're tight, no leaks. On down, right on back down to your bucket in the front. Okay, some of your daily checks will actually be inside the compartment here. You will open up the door, take your safety latch, put your safety latch in your door to hold your door. So on this side of the machine, you want to check your batteries. On this side, you want to open and check your batteries. So you check your corrosion, make sure there's no corrosion, make sure that the terminals are good and tight. Here you have an indicator light, should be green that tells you that the battery is in good condition. Again, another connection, make sure it's tight and clean. Cover back up. Same way with the next battery, same condition. You want to check your condition, tightness and corrosion on both terminals and then check and make sure that your light is also green on this one. Your battery disconnect switch, you want to check and make sure that your connections are good and tight on the back of your battery disconnect switch and everything it looks good and clean. So one of the daily checks is to check your level of your air conditioning uh, fluid inside. You check that in your sight gauge, you want your maximum, you want the system set at maximum on your AC and then check to see if there's any bubbles in the sight gauge. If there is, that means it's low on Freon, you need to add Freon. At the same time, you want to check for any leaks to find out where the leaks are coming from. In this compartment here, you will have the air cleaner for the engine. To remove the air cleaner, you would actually open up the compartment, take the cover off, and then you could remove the air filter to clean or replace. All right, in this other compartment, you have the air conditioner condenser and the radiator system and your screens. You want to make sure that you can actually get in here and clean these. These are part of the maintenance routine on the machine is to clean your fuel cooler, your condenser for your AC, and then your hydraulic and your coolant radiators. Okay, inside this compartment, you will find the AC filter. You want to change or clean this at 250 hours by removing clean or replace and put it back in. You also have one more filter on the inside of the cab that is in behind the seat that you also clean or replace as needed. Okay, on this side of the machine you also have your 
gear hubs for your drive system. You want to check these at every 250 hours. What you want to do is you want to check your oil level in your final drives on your drive system. So you want your final drive to be the line level. Gives, put your drain at the bottom. Then you would actually remove this plug. Be very careful because if the oil is hot, you could have pressure. So you want to remove it slowly and then check it to see what the level is inside. If it is up to the line, then you're okay. Put the plug back in. If not, you need to fill to the proper level. If it is low, you want to check for any leakage to find out why it is low. Okay, one of the first 50 hour checks is to check the tension on the tracks on the machine. To do this, you need to have the machine raised up off of the tracks so that you can measure between the bottom of the chassis and the top of the track. To measure, what you want to do is put your measure on from the top of your track to the bottom of your chassis and you want to measure. This measurement should be between 275 and 350 millimeters. If it is more than 350 millimeters, then you want to take and you want to tighten your tracks. By tightening the tracks, you have a grease fitting inside here. Wipe your grease off. Okay, if your tracks are too loose, what you will need to do is wipe the grease off of your grease fitting, install your grease gun, and then pump to actually tighten the tracks. To actually loosen the tracks, you would loosen that fitting, but be careful because it is under pressure. So you want to loosen it very slowly to, to release the pressure to loosen your tracks. On this side of the machine, what you want to do is check your oil level. So you want your boom in this position right here with it all the way down and the bucket open to check your oil level. You walk over on this side of the machine, this rear compartment, you open this rear compartment door, put your safety bar in, and then over on this side, you have the oil level up above here. That is where you would check your oil level. On a daily basis, you want to drain the water and the sediment out of the fuel tank. You'll reach inside, open up the lever. Once the water and sediment is done, you would actually close that lever. Then you would want to drain the water out of your fuel filter, your primary fuel filter, by opening it up. That would release any water that's in the fuel filter. And then you close. Here you have your primary filter, fuel filter, and your secondary fuel filter. You want to drain the water out of this on a daily basis, and you want to change both filters every 500 hours. Here's your engine oil filter. You would actually change this every 500 hours along with your engine oil. Up above, you have your pilot system with your pilot accumulator and your pilot filter. This filter you want to change at the first 250 hours and then every 1,000 hours afterwards. On this side of the machine, you actually have your lift cylinders. You want to grease the base end of your lift cylinders every 500 or 50 hours, each one. Then you have your swing bearing. Your swing bearing, you have two locations. You want to grease it every 500 hours, and then you want to grease it in a rotation so that you grease. Rotate the machine 40 degrees, grease, another 40, grease, another 40, grease, and then another 40, grease. So you would actually do this four times by greasing this bearing. You want to only use about four or five pumps of grease so that you do not damage the seals. Also, you have a fitting further inside. This is actually greasing your, your gear on the bottom of your swing drive. You want to do this at every thousand hours. Again, you only want four to five pumps of your grease so that you do not damage the seal. Now we will go up onto the machine. You want three points of contact whenever climbing onto the machine for safety reasons. First, we will come to the greasing points for the main boom functions to be greased every 100 hours. From there, we can continue on to the swing drive gearbox. All right, over in this area, you have the hydraulic tank. In the top, you have a a filter, intake filter, and then inside you have oil filters, hydraulic oil filters. They are to be changed at the first 250 hours 
and then every thousand hours after that. The hydraulic oil in the tank should be changed at 2,000 hours along with the strainer in the bottom of the tank. Here on the machine you have the DEF pump. On the bottom of the DEF pump you have a filter. That filter is to be replaced at every 4,500 hours. Here is your swing drive gear box. You have your fill point and then your check point with your dipstick. So you want to pull your dipstick every 250 hours to check the level of the oil. The oil in the gearbox should be replaced at every 500 hours, the first 500 hours, and then every 1,000 hours after that. Okay, here's your engine hood, so you want to open your engine hood. Make sure that it is safely fastened. Here's your engine. In your engine bay, you will have your dipstick to do your oil check for your engine on a daily basis. You want to check it, wipe the dipstick, put it back in fully, pull it out, and then recheck it again to make sure that it is full of oil. After checking, if it is low, you need to fill the oil. You fill it at the front of the, of the valve cover by removing the cap. Fill your oil and then reinsert your cap until it's snug. Next you have the belt for the air conditioning. You want to make sure that it is tight. You want to do this on a daily basis while you're up on the top of the machine. It should be between a quarter of an inch and three-eighths of an inch in tightness. Next spot is the coolant. If you need to add coolant or to check coolant, you want to remove the cap, but very do it very slowly when it's warm, so you do not get burnt. And then you can fill with oil, with coolant. Replace the cap. While you are here, you need to check the area to make sure there is no loose hoses or, or clamps or bolts. Then you can return and then close the hood. Underneath the machine you can see there's different locations for changing your oils and your coolants. We've taken the covers off. Over on the far right hand side you have for your coolant uh, change. Up in the very front in the center you have for your swing gearbox oil to change. Here you have your engine oil to change. And then over here to the right you actually have the opening for the hydraulic tank to change the oil. And now we're going to go into the cab and show you the inside cab and the functions. Open the door and climb in with three point contact. Once you see it in the seat, once in the machine, you want to fasten your seat belt. Then you can reach behind the seat and get the operator's manual out. You can turn to page 66 which tells you all of your controls for the machine. You have the operator's manual that explains all of your functions. One of the functions is to activate the pilot control shutoff switch. This will activate all of your hydraulic controls. Two of the hydraulic controls is your thumb controls on your joysticks. One is to swing your attachment, the other is to open and close your attachment. Okay, you turn the key switch on, which makes your monitor live. In your manual, you will come to a section that actually explains to you all of your buttons and all of your functions for your monitor. The monitor will then show you all of the specifics on the machine, gives you all the gauges. You have function switches here that puts you into different functions into the screen. Down below it you have different functions also buttons for one for leveling, one for digging, one for your high speed, one for your auto idle, and then one for mute. For more information on operation and maintenance please check your operator's manual. Thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.